If people take away one thing from this exhibition, I would like them to take away uh, an appreciation of the depth and richness of South Africa's history and art. The exhibition tells a long story of South Africa through artworks, from some of the earliest artworks that relate to um, Southern Africa as a cradle of humankind, to cutting edge contemporary works. It's important for us to bring these historical and archaeological periods into the present to explain why they're important for contemporary communities and why they're important for a sort of collective sense of South African identity. So we use these contemporary artworks to, um, to highlight the importance of these periods uh, for the present. I really enjoyed working with John on this exhibition. He, as an archaeologist, uh, and me with my kind of contemporary art background have teamed up to look at these two wonderful kind of elements in the, sex, in the sense of the art of South Africa going back to the deep past but at each stage a contemporary artist kind of commenting on the five or six discrete periods in, in the history of South Africa which we're trying to tell through artworks. At the introduction of the exhibition, we've got two pieces, and they're both made by the same cultural group, um, the San Bushmen. Um, one of them is a piece of rock art that is from either 1,000 to 3,000 years old. Um, it's three meters long, nearly a ton. Um, it's an incredibly impressive panel um, called the Zamenkots panel. On the other wall, we've got a piece which is a textile, um, a quilt um, using applique techniques. And so we've got an example where the same cultural group are creating art, but just in a different medium, and this time it's textile. And this is a kind of discipline that we set up the whole way through the exhibition, where we've got historical objects that are kind of being talked about or um, curated by contemporary pieces and contemporary South African voices. So if this exhibition was only about artworks in a very Western gallery orientated sense, we would have to begin the exhibition at 1652 in the European settlement of South Africa. But we try to be more inclusive with what is art and think about art objects, art works, as things that just have um, a high investment of care in them and that go beyond the purely utilitarian. One of the objects we've got here is a beautifully thin teardrop hand axe. And we actually found out during the course of the exhibition that it wasn't made by human beings. It was made by a Homo agaster, which is a early human uh, ancestor. And it's a million years old. With all these kind of things just kind of blow my mind. Um, it's our first example of kind of manipulated art. So it's a hand axe, which actually isn't a very good hand axe. It's too thin. It's too pointy, it would be difficult to hold, um, and it's, it's lovely and symmetrical, but that's not any use for a hand axe. Um, it's made out of banded ironstone, which again isn't a particularly good stone to make a hand axe out of. So this is all um, kind of showing how something has been made by, for the aesthetic, for, being, for the sake of being beautiful rather than its utilitarian purpose. In my experience of British Museum exhibitions, this is probably one of the most political, but it's difficult to tell the story of South Africa without engaging in its political history. It's difficult not to engage in the politics of apartheid and the politics of colonialism. These are very difficult histories. I think it was important for us to take a perhaps more political stance in the telling of this story. We're looking at really the way in which both black and white South African artists responded vigorously uh, against this horrendous system of apartheid. And in 1946, uh, Gerard Sokoto, a uh, black South African artist, painted uh, this wonderful work, Song of the Pick. But what Sokoto has done is completely reverse that power dynamic so that the pickaxes suddenly become this extraordinarily powerful, almost display team of pickaxes who look as if they're about to bury their axes into the head of the, the white foreman. But he would not have known, I think, that 40 years later, right at the height of apartheid in the mid to late 80s, people used postcards of Song of the Pick as a kind of badge of honor. You know, stuck them on notice boards, you know, stuck them on their fridges if they did have any fridges. Uh, and it became a really iconic work. When I talk about the exhibition, the thing that I really want to get across to people is how 
stunningly deep the history of South Africa is. The fact that we've got pieces that date to three million years ago all the way up to the very vibrant and rich contemporary um, art pieces. And that, until I started working on the project, I just had no appreciation of how incredibly deep and rich it is now. I think it's important that people understand that this isn't just about contemporary art, it's not just about historical art or just about archaeological art. It's all of those things together. It's not supposed to be uh, the canon of all of South Africa's art that's ever been made. Uh, it's supposed to be artworks that speak to particular moments in time, particular moments in history um, that help to bring a greater understanding of those, those moments in history to the public.